or grow fast enough to do it in a feasible amount of time. There are like, so you also, you will notice that the ones that could feasibly grow up fast enough for you to be able to get a mount anytime soon are the upper level ones, the uh, row A ones. These ones are all kind of like, just like things. They're about cat size. Like there's rabbits, there's some like smaller stuff. There's kind of, there appears to be a giant cockroach with fur and kind of a lizard with what what appears to be an exoskeleton. So yeah, like what would pass better as a cat in the real world? There is a uh okay, hold on. I need, I'm coming Don't... up with some some of this on the fly. So there is kind of a rabbit-ish creature who a kind of, like as you're like looking at it on the hook it kind of just like you kind of see like wings fluttering out of it almost is kind of like you recognize it as a skitter hair i want that one you point out like, oh good choice you kind of just pulls it out and as you bring it closer you also notice that its eyes are compound eyes like a flies and it kind of has weird things but it's still like a white rabbit it's weird <laughs> where are you going to keep him oh hell in my house you and jonathan fairbanks having watched you do this like if you keep him outside the hedge too long they're gonna die Can I keep him in your hollow, Mark? Sure. You promise that your cubs will, will not eat him? Nah, they don't hit. They just... They don't do much. So yeah, no, they won't hit it. Okay, I'll keep it. <laughs> uh, do I get any tickets other than the animal? Uh, you, he also kind of hands you a ticket, like, it says, uh, 80 tickets on it, so, yeah, you get tickets in addition to the animal. I'm going to try just throwing one stomach, just because I'm greedy. So, just because you're greedy. Yeah. So, that's a thrown weapon attack, so, your, uh, dexterity plus your athletics. Ah, oh, come on! Ooh. You're able to knock down, like, one or two of the things. Um, what this are your... thing is slippery. So, yeah, you knock down one or two of the things. Like, you're able to get maybe a quarter of them. It, you didn't do nearly as well as him, but it's like, you still did, like... You still like you still knocked out a few. I'm like, eh, not bad. And you just have kind of like, yeah, you can have your pick from row D. And so row D is kind of like the mouse-sized uh, hedge creatures. Just like he's like, there's like a small cat, like some insect things, some mammals. There appears to be one that's just a fluff ball with eyes. I need to see if any of these have interesting properties or something like that. Uh, the fluff ball with eyes is actually very good if used sacrificed for divination rituals. Ugh. But other than that, none of them have any major interesting properties. I'm going uh, to... Yeah? No, go ahead. What were you going to say? I'm going to keep the fluff ball just because it's cute. He just got and you take he you pick the fluff ball. He's just like says yeah. He just kind of hands it to you and just like he's just kind of like rolling around in your hand almost. Just like he just like kind of like blinks, looks up and blinks at you and kind of jumps a little happily. And it's just kind of like starts like rolling up your shoulder it, exactly like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's cute. And he like got, it. it just rolls up on your shoulder. It's just kind of like perched on your so shoulder now. It's kind of just hanging out. 
Nice. So yeah, you both have two new pets. So yeah, uh, does anyone else want to try any other carnival games? Did I did I get some tickets or no? Uh, you got um, you got like uh, additional, like forty tickets for one hundred and fifteen tickets. Ooh. Yeah, what other carnival games are there? There's a, uh, you know the one where it's like a water gun and you have to like point at a target to get the meter up. There's kind of one of those, but it looks like it's shooting some kind of dark red liquid into what appears to be a human heart. And there is also a kind of just like, there's also like a house of terrors kind of like gate that you could, that you could go through and it says survive the house you get you get a prize ooh house of terror yeah. is coming back you sure about that let's speak me yeah survive could be quite literal fear, yeah fear is my court special team so i could yeah, have but, to try i mean it could have dangerous edge beast inside yeah, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. I'm going with you. I don't want you killed. That will be that will yeah, be a breach of our contract. Well, of our bargain. Of our oath. So the so is uh Joseph coming along into the Into the you broke up. Into the is Joseph coming along into the uh survive the House of Terrors ride? No. Okay, so you're just waiting Joseph outside. Joseph is smart. <laughs> Kill joy. Okay, anyways. <laughs> so yeah, you all walk in. Um, but as you approach the thing, uh, kind of like what well, appears to be a hob, and like he's like he has blue skin. He appears to be mostly hairless. His he doesn't appear to have eyes. It's kind of she's like kind of like okay. Before you guys go in, I need you to sign this real quick. This guy holds out like kind of. Like what appears to be five, like a stack of like five hundred papers with three signature lines for each of you. I'm gonna quickly read over the paper. Roll academics. Roll Ooh. intelligence plus academics. When will I get free to? <laughs> When? Really? <laughs> <laughs> so Marcus is reading over this. He kind of sees, like, as far as you can tell, it appears to be a fairly standard, like, liability agreement like we can't be in trouble if you if you get hurt or whatever there it also appears to be a non-disclosure agreement what do you and keep you're in there horrors yeah he kind of just gives you a big like toothless grin are you sure about that alexander that is real that sounds really dangerous i mean you're not in you're not in your prime anymore you know no offense but hey I still hey for your information i still like i'm in my 20s i do it it's just my duration felt like it went for five years or so mm -hmm. yeah i suppose we bed back away I'll be back. Yeah, maybe later. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, the the offer is always open. You can win great prizes. Yeah, but we're not. We are three. Uh, I'm quite sure we can make that uh, our house even in the edge. What did you hmm. say? We are three guys trying to get past the narrow. Uh, 
the house, I'm quite sure we can manage to do it, even in the edge. I didn't hear any of that, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, like you're far away, but... Uh, I was saying that there are three of us, so we probably can do it even in the edge. Oh, well, yeah, we probably can do it, but look at this this way. If we exhaust ourselves, we are going to have bad time on the way back home. But the tickets, we need tickets. Isn't and that never said anything about tickets. Here. They said if they said the thing about price that doesn't mean tickets. Marcus turns to the guy and asks, does it give tickets? Yeah, it gives tickets. It can all you can also forego tickets for other benefits. Like what? Eh, tokens, maybe depending on how well you do, they can be of minor or greater power. Ah, yeah, that does tip. That does certainly tip the scale somewhat. You're some I'm sure it does. You're a strange bunch of old goblins. Just no offense. I'll... Not taken. But I mean, if you can prove yourself here, you must obviously be be worthy of 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 an item. I mean, makes sense, doesn't it? Marcus, Marcus. Yeah. Kind of tries to you tease the other Marcus saying like, so you are the afraid Marcus, right? No, I'm not afraid. Oh god, it's a who's a bad Marcus competition. We both know there's an opening for a night and we both know which one of us is gonna be a night. And we both know which one of us doesn't want to be a night. Well, well we can test this wang measuring competition in there. All right, I'm in. Um, before we go in, uh, Marcus kind of looks around, seeing if he, there is any like a torch or something nearby. Just to be sure, I, Marcus is speaking to the hubs. Contracts are fair game, right? Of course, it wouldn't be very fair otherwise. Yeah, there is any torch nearby? Uh, doesn't appear to be it. There are like torches, like there are, there's like lanterns and stuff, but no like open flame torches. I'm afraid you roll on the fire. Hmm? Uh, is there any of the torches like? nearby that Martins can grab it. There doesn't there are just lanterns and stuff, like and they're all fairly high up just out of your reach. Okay. I think I'll have Alex sign the waiver. Yeah, hell with it. I'll sign too. I mean tokens are no Okay, um, after that, that looking around for torches, Marcus just grabs like some uh, dirt from the ground and takes a huge bite of it uh, from it, activating a contract. What contract are you activating? Primal Glory. Come on. Okay, hold on. I need to be protected. That's okay. why I, I went with my armor. Also, who here has got me highest stealth? Probably you. I'm not saying. <laughs> okay, cuz. Hmm. Well, once we enter, I'm gonna activate Clock of Night. Well, I will. As undignifying as it is, I that too will earn. Must have got any black bits of clothing. I will. Marcus will do the same as other Marcus, and he too. Well, a bit of her. So as you both start eating dirt, you begin to get like the 
lawyer man, even though he doesn't have eyes, kind of just like glance, kind of just tilts his head quizzically and just like, and then just kind of like leans by like, oh, as he sees the, as you eat the earth, like kind of like dirt and stuff begin like surrounding you and kind of forming a suit of protective armor protecting any sensitive bits as it were and you guys are like all armored up and you that's w- armor rating of 1-1 one, one. so yeah okay as I was saying does it does anybody have any bits of black clothing they can immediately put on like a hat or a glove sorry I black isn't really my color Neither yeah. Is yeah. Okay. I take out a pair of gloves and pair us. It's Emmerich's mark. That's one of them. Uh, say, sorry, say that again. I take out a. Uh, I basically take out a a pair of black gloves and I give you one to trig oh. to trigger my contract loophole. Did we of a mark us <laughs> say you had anything black to put on? Uh, no, I don't. Does my skin count? Does uh, your no, skin but... count as a new clothing? I don't know. Think... It your skin does not count as a black piece. It was a joke. <laughs> well, that's because, unless, of course, we decide to skin you and sew it back on. <laughs> That might um, be going a bit too far. And just before going in, are there pebbles on the ground or rocks? Yeah, it's like cobblestone, like lore and stuff, yeah. Okay, Marcus will pick a few of them, like three, and begin juggling with them to invoke the loophole in elemental weapon. Yep. Performing a showy trick with the modern version of the elements. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. So and as they... you as you're juggling, the stones kind of begin to grow like larger and like start to like kind of wait, like wait, start... wait, I have to roll. Oh yeah, then roll. And survival. Um and my weirds. One. Oh, come on. So you're, like, juggling and stuff, and, like, you try to feel the, uh, like, you feel the Earth kind of, like, give way and start to form gauntlets, and then it just kind of just falls to the ground, and, like, you sense that you're, it's not going to be able to work if you try it again, like, Why? soon. Nice okay. trick, Marcus. Right. No? What's keeping me from trying again? Like, you just sense that you kind of, like, the the spirit of the Earth kind of, like, it gave you a chance, but if you try again, it, you sense it might push back a little harder. Huh. Well, fuck, fuck the Earth. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend two glamours to try to invoke a sword of, made out of the air itself. All right, so you, like, kind of, you start okay, yeah, roll for that first. Finally. Okay, so you form you like you as you like shape the air into this like flat plane and a sword and you kinda of just like wave it through the air. So let me find the stats for melee weapons real quick. I'm on it. Uh melee weapons. So you want a a sword, machete? Would that no. work? Well, oh. there's also there's no just straight up sword stat. Here. Um, they are in Outlook. You just when oh, I see. Uh, instrument of violence. I know they are in the in the core books, you know. There we are. Uh, here, sword. Damage plus three, initiative minus three. 
And since I've got two success, I'm. Uh, what can increase, I do with that? You can increase the weapon modifier, uh, decrease the initiative penalty, or add range to it. Ooh. Um, and you can do like two of those things, or you can do one of those things twice. Uh, I will decrease the initiative penalty and add a range to it. So, you as you pick this up, this sword feels like lighter than a normal one, given that it's made of air. And you, like, feel it, and yeah, and you can, like, you give it an experimental swipe, and, like, kind of, like, kind of, it kind of, like, cuts the air, like a shock, like a shock wave, just whoosh, kind of, like, cutting the leaf off a nearby tree. Just, yeah, so. Hmm. Good enough. And that'll just, and that'll just be a ranged attack using your weapon. I am ready. I'm ready. Let's go. So, you all three step into the step into the uh, house of terrors, then yes. it, and you, to try to survive and see what would happen. And you hear the door slam behind you, and Joseph, who is standing right, like just outside the door. Is is approached by the eyeless, toothless, blue goblin man. Just kind of like left your friends. Why'd you let your friends go in there like that? If I wanted to. Well, I mean, you guys are a group, ain't you? Better to work together than it is to just, you know, leave leave each other to die. They made their own choice. Well, I'm sure you don't want. You sure you don't want anything to do while you wait for them? They could be a while. I'm fine. Okay. Well, I gotta wait for the other side, so if you want to come with me, I can show you where the exit is and away from if you want. Sure. So you kind of just... So you both kind of just walk towards what is essentially the other side of the uh, area, and you're just like... Yeah, well, they may be a while. Uh, I think the well, I think the beasts are particularly ferocious today. <laughs> my poor fluffball. Well, I, I would I would have left my fluffball with Joseph before entering. Just... So yeah, the furball is with Joseph, safe from harm, as is yeah. the insect rabbit. I would assume. Yeah, yeah. The skitter hare. I have to remember how you call it that. So yeah, you. Are, so the three of you are walked in, and like as you hear the doors kind of slam shut behind you, like you guys are basically pitch black. To make like, it even more fun, I'll trigger my spook condition right now as the door closes. So what do you do to trigger that? I just run like in front of the group. So as soon as the door closes, you just jump and start bolting straight forward. Yep. All right. Uh, resolve what? that condition and take a beat. What are you doing? Well, all you guys here is just footsteps, just walking straight forward. It's like pitch black. You can you still feel your swords have like. Uh, I wouldn't assume any. Do any of you have any ability that lets you see in the dark at all? I mean, I can conjure up a will o wisp, but if you, you I mean... um, is my like uh, fetch power able like to have the fireball and not drawing until I want? Yes, you can do that. Then I'll cast a fireball. So you, uh, so like you're like running for it, and you kind of like bump into something. You can kind of feel it stumble, and you, and you see. And as you like put out your hand, and a fireball lights up, and you just see this kind of weird, like big, muscular insect man. The closest, the closest uh, mundane animal to him would be a cockroach. Like, yeah. I can post an image real quick. Uh, but yeah, this thing is. Like, it's this giant, creepy insect man here. Okay. 
um, like you run into this, it's just like, whoa, and like you just like look up at this thing and kind of just looks down at you. It's just like, the moment, if I see that he's going to attack, I'm going to throw the fireball at his face. If not, I just keep rolling, running, and running. Okay. So, hold on. I'm trying to figure out a way to upload this image okay. to show the stream. Sorry. Choose a file. Uh, images. Sorry about this. This I wasn't expecting you to actually go in here. So. Well. Okay. So. I mean, you say tokens, so. You know. So. It looks like that thing. It doesn't look good. So yeah, it's essentially this giant, big, muscly cockroach man, and it like looks down at you, and just lets out this goddamn terrifying scream. Like, <laughs> whoops, that's not good for my throat. <laughs> and so he just like kind of like, and he's gonna immediately try to swing at you. What's your defense? My defense is actually eight, so I think that'll be good. So he's actually down to a chance die then. And he succeeds. <laughs> How does the armor work again? Uh so it will reduce so it's one to one, but I can't reduce it beneath one bashing. Yeah. So I take one bashing, is that it? Uh you take two back. Actually, and your defense dropped by like, one. Yep, and if he continues attacking, so like there, this thing is like big, muscular. He towers over like all of you. He's, oof. and he, he just kind of, as soon as he sees him and lets out that chilling scream, which I won't repeat for fear of my throat. He just like kind of brings his arm around and kind of clocks you in the side of the head and like you feel like and you stumble a little but you're but you were able to like dodge most of it but he still did and your earth armor was thankfully able to take some of the damage so that's just two bashing then so yeah uh roll initiative and then uh mark Emo, then you take a minus two to your initiative bonus because of yep. the sword. Not that it matters. That's not how it works. It's 1d10 plus your initiative score. Yeah. And that, okay. you rolled a 17. Oh, no, wait, that's Marcus Hugh. Oh, dear God. Yeah, but it did, it did roll dexterity composure, which is not how initiative works. No, it's not. It's just, isn't it just what is lower? I rolled it in the sheet. So no, no. Dex you it's just have to one d ten plus your initiative score. Like what and, is that? And dexterity or... composure is the initiative score. No, it's not. No. It's you not. must. You must still have them selected on your sheet because it doesn't remove what you have selected. Yep. I have nothing selected. Yes, you have on the bottom right corner, just, just, um, just up uh, from your bits. I think it is right, guys, because my initiative score is 10, so it rolled 1d10 plus 10. It's right. How's yes. Your initiative? But uh, your initiative is 10? Uh, I think so. It's... How do you uh, calculate initiative? Hold on, it's... I'm finding it. No, right actually, I, th I think he is right. Yeah, it's the de dexterity plus composure. So it's 7, not 10. Yeah. But I have. Um, you roll fast, fast reflexes. He has fast reflexes oh. 3, meaning he. Okay, yeah, so that's correct. He has 17 initiative. Whoa. I'm just so used to seeing the, uh, the other stuff, I forgot where initiative came from. <laughs> But speaking of that, I think Yar is wrong, uh, Mark, too. 
because you can have you cannot have just one in dexterity and composure. It's because he has minus. Wait, he has minus yeah. three from the uh, sword. Oh, okay. Minus okay. two. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Minus two. Okay. Uh, how do I do an initiative tracker on here? Uh, in the bar in the left side, there is a dice, I think. Or something like that. A clock, maybe? Yes, found it. Okay. So. Okay, this is confusing, but I'll. Okay, so. I think we had to have tokens for this Okay, part. yeah, put tokens on and I'll change it. So you got a 17. So you got. Oh, okay. I deleted the tokens. The okay, tokens, I'll sorry. just add the tokens, and I can do this. I'm, I am okay. new to roll twenty. Okay, so right click. So you, so cockroach man got an eight. Uh, Alexander, you got an eight. You got a seventeen, which baffles me. You got a nine, so it will be Marcus's turn. I'll throw a fireball to his face. Roll minus, roll your, roll a throwing attack minus four. You can use it. You can use inspired. <laughs> I will do it. <laughs> so, yeah. like, huh? What do emotional yeah. success actually do on combat? I think, roll? Extra, I think it does extra damage. I'm not sure. Let me. Uh... Yeah, because yeah, I... if it makes any difference, I'll use it. If not, I'll save it. Uh. Yeah, well, we can use it at a different date. I'm sorry, this is actually my first combat with Chronicles of Darkness, so mm -hmm. I'm new to this. No problem. We're struggling I'm... together. I have a bit of experience with it. Okay. Uh, it doesn't look like Exceptional does anything. Yeah. Okay, case. I'll keep just the three then. Alright, so... Uh, what did, so that, that'll just be three lethal then, because it would be zero. Thing. So, you throw this, so, like, you, like, rear back, and, like, kind of, like, a pitcher for, in the real world, you kind of just, like, you throw this thing, like, directly into his chest, just, like, he's just kind of, like, enveloped in it. He's basically on fire now. He's, like, just, like, kind of stumbling around. He's just, like, glaring at you angrily. He's just like, and he's just like, he's just staring at you. So yeah, uh, so, like, he's fairly badly burnt now. He's kind of a little charred. He, you see his skin kind of black and more. Other market. <laughs> I'm Bless gonna you. do. Oh, Thank yep. you. I'm gonna go with. Uh... Well, I will attack him from range, but well, with my with my sword, and I'm going for all out attack. So that will be a minus three penalty because. Uh, of yeah, but I guess a plus two from an all out attack, but I don't have any defense for the rest of for so the it's next. Just turn. Minus one. Yeah. Oh, come on. Uh, really? But a sword is automatically plus three, so it's still... you. Then, oh, well, no, it doesn't hit him at all. Cause, no, no yeah. I need at least one success, too. I'm good at math. <laughs> so you kind of, like, switch... So you, like, put all your might into this attack. You take your sword, you just, like, do a diagonal cut, and yeah. it kind of tears up the... Like, you can, like, even... 
without the burning cockroach man who is now generating your source of light like it gets like you can like all feel this like rush of wind coming at this guy unfortunately he feels it too and is able like sidestep it but only just barely as it like cuts off a tiny bit of his of one of his antenna god damn it and like Marcus is just like left panting slightly at all this at like the exertion required to do that attack. Alexander, I'm gonna have at him with my the claws generated for my lethal mien. Uh, okay. I need to see that. That'll be a strength and brawl. Okay. So that'll be minus two. Actually, does I <laughs> since it's range combat, does it get any defense at all for my attack? Um. Well, I they usually get defense I mean, against like thrown item, thrown yeah. attacks, which yeah, is yeah, that makes kind that of, makes sense. Yeah, I'm kind of ruling that as a thrown attack, considering yeah. you're not just shooting air. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, that would be too lethal damage. So Alex, so uh considering the fact that he is also on fire, as you run into Claude, and you were able to get, like, a good blow against, like, his lower abdomen. He's kind of, like, just... Uh, he looks like he's staggering a little, but he still looks pretty goddamn sorry. Uh, take one point of lethal damage as, like, as you, like, move in, the flames kind of that are slowly enveloping him start, like, singeing you slightly. Right, so then it is his turn. So he's just kind of, he is on fire and he's kind of like getting pelted by uh like even it even though that attack missed, he's still getting hurt like he, like all hell. He's not he is not in a good place right now. He's just like kind of like just like kind of staggering back, being pelted by the fireball, the the shadow man c coming at him and clawing at him, and along with like Marx's armor, kind of just pelting him, like with just as it's like violently like swirling around him, he's starting to become fairly wounded. So he lets out like so he lets out another scream, and around the corner you can see by the light of his flaming corpse. Two more uh, of the giant cockroach monsters. Yay! And they all and they both and they both notice you doing this. Is like and they both kind of run like the guy being attacked right now is no shape to attack. He's just kind of backing away from you guys and like fear almost. And but the other two are going to but one of them is going to attack Alexander. So, Alexander, what is your defense? Four. So, he'll roll 4d10. So, that'll be two lethal... So, that'll be two bashing damage to you as one of them... Like, one of them with surprising quickness kind of just runs in and kind of just, like, punches you straight in the face and, like, kind of throws you back a little and you, like, are a little off balance now. And... Marcus Emo, what is your defense? Um, zero. Wait, what? Yes, what? I went on allowed and I went on an allowed right. attack, so I forgot my defense. Thankfully, he rolled like shit. <laughs> yeah, so one bashing, and it takes one little for my armor. So yeah, as he, as the second one who has most recent kind of it just runs at the one he like they can't see apparently that well either like you would assume like even it's like even with the flaming cockroach man which is something i never thought i'd say <laughs> they they can't see they must not be able to see that well either but they're still able like sense you almost but and like are able like hit you 
but you're able to kind of dodge out of the way, even though you're mostly hurt. And he was able to like get a glancing blow at you, like, like he hits you like kind of in the ribs, almost. You're a little, ooh, but you're mostly fine now. Marcus Hugh. Uh, I'll try to fireball one of the new guys. So spend the glamour. And then these things yeah. have four defense as well. It's weird. I don't find any rules that say exceptional success does anything on attacks. But like the first dots of elemental warriors says it it lets you have an exceptional success on three successes for dealing elemental damage. So it must do something. Maybe it'll let you get the inspired condition easier. Eh. I'm not sure. Nah. I'm looking at I'm trying to look at the rules too and I'm not No, right. there's nothing on the rule on exceptional success probably. Politics. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you rolled. You got one success. So you're also able to throw a fire. Which one are you throwing at? The one that's not on fire near you or near uh, other Marcus? Uh, the one on fire started to run away, right? He's kind of like staggering back slightly. He hasn't started running away full out yet. Yeah, I'll throw at the one that's attacking the other Marcus. So you kind of just lob it across your shoulder, like kind of behind you. And it hits him kind of like in the shoulder. It's not, It didn't like catch nearly as well as uh, the first one did, but you can still see it like charred him slightly. He's kind of like, hmm, kind of like glares to look at you before focusing back on Marcus. Uh, that Speaking of Marcus... Well, I guess I will... I will attack the cockroach in front of me and still still go on, on, on an all-out attack. So that is a minus one penalty. I believe in myself. <sighs> well, that's still four damage. Yeah, but... Oh. So, you, like... So, yeah. So you, again, kind of put all your weight into this attack, and you just... Whew, like, you kind of, like, chop through, like, a good bit of him. Like, he's, like, has a massive gash across his chest now. It's, like, kind of, like... He's just, like, kind of, like, holding himself together with his hand, trying to keep whatever is on the inside of his shell like from leaking out but he you did a good deal of damage to him but he's still standing man he's not going to go down that easy alexander taliazin i'm going to get my staff out uh-huh and bludgeon some and try and finish off swordy sword mark <laughs> Ro ro roach friend. Okay, so you're running over to the one attacking um, Marcus with air sword. But in this case, I'll be bludgeoning it with my staff, yeah. Well, it'll still do lethal damage. But yeah, okay. Uh, so that'll be a minus two penalty. I'm getting the hang of this. Minus two, you say? Minus two. Yeah, I'll expand my inspired condition here, why not? To re-roll that. Maybe a good idea. An automatic success. Oh. 
can you do that with Inspire? You don't remember that from the Mage game? Do what? The Mage that game. That was Steadfast. That wasn't Inspire. No, they're both basically the same. Oh. Mm, not to change Link, you know? When your ca character takes an action pertaining to that inspiration, you may resolve the condition. Inspire doesn't say anything about getting an automatic success. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guess that means I would just miss Van. That yeah. means I still get. So you roll after him, and you just and you kind of, and you kind of like you. He kind of like he, he's like he's been kind of pretty heavily assaulted, but he's still able to like duck under the uh attack, even though he's like fairly bad. He's like he does not look. Great, you guys have been ganging up on him pretty hard. Yeah, since I've got the staff drawn, at least it's not my defense is now five since it's got reach. Alright, so it is so the flaming so like the one who's on fire is kind of just like it's been burning for a for a few while and you notice that it might not be like melt like it's like not burning like the outside, but he kinda of just falls to the ground dead like his like like him just kind of twitching a little and like the this is the one who was on fire before and the other one who like the the one near Marcus Hugh just notices this and kind of just again just runs at market runs at Marcus Hugh trying to so that would just be a chance to die so he's able to do oh. two bashing so he's like he like gets battered a little by the swirling like bits of dust and stone surrounding you, but he's still able to get a good like strong punch in, dealing two bashing damage to you. Even with the defense, well, the armor. I mean, the armor. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he's even with the armor. Yeah. Oh, these guys are strong. Yep, they're big, buffy. They're big. Buff cockroach bodybuilders, man. All right, strangely so homo strangely homoerotic too. <laughs> what do you mean strangely? That's the entire point. Okay, and then I the other confused. <laughs> Good, then I'm doing my job. Okay, so the one who was recently slashed by Marcus kind of just lunges at him again. Come at me, bruh. And since you have no defense... Nope. Oh. <laughs> I have three armor. Oh, oh. Okay, so that's... One, two, three, four, five, six. Six bat... So that'll be nine bashing damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, three bashing. Not big is. Well, nine bashing. So you take six damage still. Why not? Oh. They have plus from attacks. They have an inherent bonus to their fists. Hmm. No, things are, start, are looking a bit dire. So, like, this guy has been, like, you've been beating around their friends. This guy just, like, lunges at you and just punches you, like, dead in the face. Like, oh, wow, that nearly knocked you out. So yeah, yep. he punches you dead in the face, and you're just like, oh god, you think you might have a concussion. <laughs> like, he hit you hard. Alright, Marcus Hugh. Um, I'm checking something. What is the Berserker condition again? Uh, you have to attack, you have to use your action to attack enemies, you can't do anything else last until the end of combat or until all enemies are dead. Does uh, Marcus taking that huge damage count as me avenging a friend? Do you... Okay. We're you not him... friend. <laughs> <laughs> but you... I have a note to protect him, so... We're still not friends. <laughs> We're rivals. <laughs> 
I'll, okay, do you both consider yourself friends? Absolutely not. Yeah, no. We barely met, and Marcus hates, hates Marcus Hood's guts. Okay, hold on. Let me find the thing for this. Yeah, it um, says for a loved one or friends. No frenemies or rivals. No all. Words. Uh, yeah, no. If in the eyes of the wer weird and the eyes of both of you, you two do not consider each other friends, so it does not. Tr so you cannot activate the then loophole. That's for him. Well, that's you... for him. I'm just going to throw fireballs then. You're burning through glamour, buddy. How much do you have left? Two. Okay, two? Alright. Because if you spend all your glamour in a day, that's a clarity breaking point. But, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll keep the last one. Alright, so you throw another fireball. And, like, which one are you throwing at? The one near you? Or the one the... attacking me. Yeah. The one attacking you. So, roll minus... Roll uh, throwing minus four. So, like, again, you kind of just, like, it grazes it, but it's still, like, like, you can see, still see, like, some, like, some pretty bad burn marks on it. So, like, this thing is kind of just, like, mm, it does not like that. All right, uh, nearly unconscious, Marcus. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to dodge. That's doubling your defense. Yeah. Okay. No, that's doubling and then rolling to consult successes, I believe. No, no, f screw that. I'm going to attack him somewhere. Fuck it. <laughs> so you begin to get into it like a. Yeah, Max says yell, Summer! So you begin to de get into a defensive stance and then you immediately attack. And I use my willpower. Yep. <laughs> Revenge! What is my fucker friend. dead? Yes. Uh, so no penalty. Come on. It's Just my no penalty. It's my. It would. It would be minus three four. willpower. Oh. Oh yeah. That would be no penalty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, <I'm happy. laughs> Just fuck me. Fuck me right in the ass. <laughs> Was that another all-out attack? No. Okay, thank not. God. So, again, you kind of just, like... So, you, like, focus, and you just, like... <laughs> so, you swing at this guy again. And you miss. Like, he's just, like... <sighs> like, these things seem to have some kind of, like, crazy sense that allows him, like, sense the air that allows him just, like, Obviously. dodge almost every single one of your attacks. All right. And he takes a damage, and he's, like, still being pelted by some of these, like, rocks and pebbles surrounding you. Uh, Alexander. Okay, I'm gonna attack again with my staff, this time with an expenditure of willpower. <laughs> you guys are burned through this shit. I'll be sure, so, so I'll get back soon. So that'll be a minus three penalty either. Well, it'll cancel out because of the willpower. Uh, what's three really lethal? Damage rating too. Okay. So yeah, you kind of so you bring your staff around and you kind of like crack it in the face. Like he, like you see, like the exoskeleton surrounding this guy, like kind of just start to crack a little. And, like, he's just like, oh, and he looks dazed now. Like, he's just like, where, where, he's just like shaking his head a little, just like clapping himself on the cheeks, trying to focus. And he just like, you could si see him like get into a stance. And then he immediately lunges towards uh, Mr. Marcus again. What's your defense? Five. Okay, so that'll be a 1d10. Okay, so he like moves to attack you, and he and he like misses, but like yeah. he cut fairly close. If and he, he landed takes, that, he takes a he takes a damage from my armor. And he and that last like and he's still being pelted by all this stuff, 
and as he's being pelted, like r- more rocks and stuff are just like finding their way into the cracks that are on his head, and this like one of them just kind of like goes straight into his eye, and he falls over dead. <laughs> ah, fuck you! Do I regain some <laughs> willpower point for that? <laughs> is it, yeah, is that isn't your thread revenge? Yes, I'll let you get a willpower point back for that. Yeah, thank you very much. Because that that was that would be a pretty sweet revenge. <laughs> So, but there's still one more remaining, and he, again, uh, moves to attack uh, Marcus, who is not wielding the sword and who is not nearly unconscious. I'm running cautious. Okay. And, that, and since that was a chance die, that's actually a failure. Yeah. So he moves to attack, but like. Marcus is just too quick, too nimble. He's able to dodge fairly deftly, and he is. A, and it's his turn now. Uh, gladly, the word thinks that me and Marcus are enemies, so I just put my hand in my pocket and I cast this quick summons, and I just think, "Give me a weapon! Give me a weapon!" Trying to grab a weapon from his uh, uh, hollow. A uh, quick summons. Discrete summons. Discrete the summons. loophole is taking something from an enemy or that belongs to an enemy house, something like that. So we're not an, we're things. rivals, not to me. I don't want you dead. You're in my motley. If the weird accepts that, then I'm going to do it. If not, I'm just going to. Okay. I'll punch say. The guy. I'll say that you two have enough of an antagonistic relationship that it will count as uh, as you for enemies for the purposes of the poll. Because neither right. of you really like the the other, and it's while you may not be enemies in your eyes, you're still close enough to antagonizing each other almost constantly. For weird to accept that as the loophole. So, so roll like- manipulation plus persuasion plus. Uh, can I use my willpower now? No, right? No. <laughs> so, you try to summon this thing, but you you can't really... Like, you sense that you could pull something from uh, the house of your sworn foe, Marcus, but it's not working, and you have left yourself... And you, like, focus for a few seconds, but it doesn't work. So now it is Marcus's turn. Fuck you, big thing! I will just attack from from a range. Alrighty. Yeah, willpower. Come on, dice. Work with me. Four, minus four penalty. Oh, oh my god. Well, that's still four littles. That's good. So, yeah, this guy is, was like has been the most undamaged so far and you like you you like again like kind of like chop through some of his armor like he has like kind of a like he's a little badly cut you cut fairly deep not nearly so much as you had on but like there's like kind of a gash across his chest now like he is Alexander <laughs> yeah wacky wacky Roll. Minus three. Man. So again, you cut. You go to hit him. Like you go for a lower blow. You try to hit him again. And so he, he like hits you like hit him but it kind of just bounces off slightly and he is like unfazed by your attack and it is 
his turn now. So he kind of like looks down at the gash across his chest and he just like kind of glares at, at Marcus. And he's going to take a running attack. Uh, so your defense is 3D. Uh, that is uh, five bashing damage before our to who? To Marcus. Who? Not you, Marcus. Uh, Sword Marcus. What? I mean, you cut him pretty bad. You did the most damage out of everyone so far. I was at range. Yeah, well, he still knows it was you. Fuck my life. So yeah, you run and he hits you in the face, basically you knocking you out. The, the Is he... Does he have enough speed to do that? It's not a very big room. It's like to maybe like ten feet across. You guys have been it's been a fairly close melee. Uh, uh the last result. Argue with the narrative. Hmm? <laughs> I said that's the last result you have left to argue. The narrative. <laughs> well, unconscious. So he kinda just like he's like, with surprising speed, like, almost, well, probably supernatural, he kind of just, like, runs at you and just, and he just hits you right in the face, and that's all you remember. You go unconscious. Wait, did you, did you apply my defense? <laughs> yes, because he... Oh, my had, God. So if your defense is five... Yeah. Eight, five. Uh, Joseph would be waiting outside forever for the party that died. I mean... To be fair, they already killed two of them. Okay, it is Marcus. It is I'll remove playing Marcus from the initiative. Okay, Marcus, you go. I'm going to waste my clarity, but I'm going to throw a fireball with willpower. Um, you didn't. You would you? How many? Well, you wouldn't still have when you still have one left because the loophole from the other one. Yeah, I have one glamour, but when I go out of glamour, I lose clarity, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then yeah, I'll waste my last drop glamour, use my willpower, and throw a fireball. Okay. So roll minus. He's starting to get. He's uh. So that'll still be a minus four. He's still like fairly. He's all big and tough still. So only minus one, right? Because of minus, the willpower. Minus, yeah, minus one then because of willpower. Ooh, okay. So you hit him like dead in the back and you see the fires kind of start to take hold on this guy as well. And he's just kind of like scratching his back, trying to put it out a little fr kind of frantically. And he's just like. Am I heard? Yeah. Yep. Hi. He's got a little hiccup. I don't, I don't know what happened, just... I lost sound. Okay, so... I what was the last thing you heard me say? Now. Sorry. It oh. just like, and then I lost sound. Okay, so it hits him straight in the back. He's on fire now. And he's... Okay, so he's like... Okay, roll stamina then, Mark. Well, actually, yeah, roll stamina first, then I'll deal with the outcome damage to Mr. Cockroach Bodybuilder. I don't think you take a, the wound penalty Wait. for stamina rolls. 
If you're rolling to stay conscious, I don't think you take the wound penalty still. So it's just roll three. I don't know. Okay. Well, one success. So you're able to stay. So, like, he still hit you and you still kind of <laughs> flew across the room slightly, but you're still, like, barely clinging on to consciousness. <laughs> if, like, you are, like, certain now that you have a concussion. <laughs> oh, my. But, so, uh,. Yeah, so the four, so then Marcus's fireball hits it dead in the back. It starts taking hold, and now it's kind of on fire, like the first one was. And since Mark and Marcus, having used all like the emotional energy that he has today, uh, so I already rolled that clarity dice. He's like a little bit shaken from using all of the energy that he basically has, and he's. Like, you see some of the colors start to fade from his fire, and he's like, looks much more tired, but he's still able to, like, maintain his just composure, and so, yeah. So it's now Alexander's turn. Okay. I'm going to once more whack it with my staff and hopefully hit it. Yes, right after Alexander. Modifiers? Uh, minus three. Jesus. So, yeah, you miss, but again, kind of just bounces off. Uh, Marcus, the one who nearly fell unconscious. Well, here we go. Actually, you know what? I will spend a pot of glamour to active elemental warrior, which allowed me to just throw a fireball at him. Or fire like more like a fire thrower, I think. So he he doesn't get his defense. I think. So does it say? Uh, which one are you activating? Hungry Leaping Flames? Yeah. Uh, they make melee attack. It still qualifies as a melee attack, so it still applies to fence, but it's just at range. Yeah. But okay. that will be only a minus two, but on top of your minus five penalty. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Come on. So, yeah. So, now it's, like, the cockroach man's kind of just, like, looking around, kind of, like, just panicked on fire, and he's just, like, kind of, like, he just kind of, like, runs off into the darkness. Like, he's just, he's fucking out of there, man. He just like kind of just like, and then like you hear a loud thud, like uh, maybe like twenty feet away, which you presume is him hitting the ground. You can still see his like smoldering corpse, kind of just twitching in the over in the over on one over down one of the hallways. It's like. So yeah, now you're surrounded by three burnt and mangled cockroach corpses. Yeah. All right. for, the, for the sake of my uh, scholar nature, would it would this count as handling the unknown? Uh yeah, sure. Hey, willpower back. So as, like, you hear the last one kind of, like, just die and you see it just smoldering, the doors, like, on the opposite side where you entered, like, open up and you see both Joseph and the lawyer man standing there like, oh, you survived. Congrats. You, say that. you look like shit. I'm just, I mean, I'm just surprised you survived.
Yeah, well... I'm glad you're all right. It, this is why we signed the non-disclosure agreement. You can't talk mm. about what happened in there. Marcus just goes like, give me the tickets. Oh, yeah, definitely. You get plenty of tickets for that. My, my. And he kind of like just takes, but and he kind of holds his hands out for all three of it, all three of your uh, coupons, and takes them and kind of just like waves them around. And you all see that you've had about two hundred and fifty tickets added to them. Was it again? Uh, yeah. Well, I don't have it on me, but hold on here. Let me see. He kind of just, like, pulls out, like, what appears to be, like, a shoddily made coupon for what is labeled as a rubber eraser. It's, like, <laughs> it's labeled as, like, one, one, uh, token redeemable at, uh, Jackson's discount tokens. And, like, yeah. So... Yeah, he hands you this. He's just like, well, if you can redeem that at the token shop, at one of the token shops in the uh, marketplace, but I'm. Congratulations! You survived the House of Horrors! Yeah. Hey. All so right. we got a token a thingy to trade for a token, but no tickets, right? Just you got you each got two hundred and fifty tickets as well. Oh, plus the same. Okay. Oh right. Yeah, and Marcus for for unconscious, I guess. Let's funny. face. That's funny. <laughs> All right, so you you four have uh you three have survived the. Market's House of Horrors, barely. Well, not really barely. You still, it was still, it was a fairly fair fight. I, so yeah, that was the second episode of Changeling the Lost Gotham. I hope you all had a good time. Yeah, yeah. And I think I fulfilled all my aspirations. Uh, let me see your aspirations. Uh, yeah, I think I got one. I'll say you. I'll say you fulfilled. Prove yourself in battle and learn about a non fey supernatural. Okay. So you get two beats from that. Uh, Alexander. Uh. Da, 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 da. Uh, Alexander did not fulfill any of his uh aspirations this session. Joseph Joseph gets a beat for doing the helping the family find the dog and uh Marcus Emo gets aspirations uh I'll give you a beat for making progress on getting Sir Jonathan Fairbanks as a mentor nice and everyone then gets also a beat from doing the session to completion. Why the experience? Yep, same. Yep, same, yeah. So, uh, I'm going to hop off about now. Uh, if you have any questions about what happened, I'll be happy to answer them. I'll be online for a few minutes yet. But, yeah, so if you have any complaints, anything you really liked, anything you want to see more of, just let me know and I'll try to work around them.